Hey there, friends and fellow nature journalers. I am Marley Pfeiffer, and this is the Nature Journal Show, where you tune in every week to get tips, tricks, and techniques to help you get more out of your nature journaling. Do you like bugs as much as I do? Are you interested in science? Are you interested in the education of your or other children and their future learning? Well, if so, this episode is for you. I have a really fun conversation with Stephanie Dole, aka the Beetle Lady, where I learn about her work teaching kids about bugs and science and some of her ideas about how nature journaling can help scientists and help kids in their future. Make sure you stay tuned until the end if you want to see a ghost mantis. So how did you get into nature journaling? So that it's kind of funny. I had seen Jack Law's book, John Muir Law's book, at mm-hmm. a nature center when I was camping once. Mm-hmm. And I looked at it and I loved it. The, I loved the it. Field guide the, one? No, his nature drawing. Okay, his nature got drawing it. and journaling yeah. book. And I absolutely fell in love with it. And then I bumped into him around town here. Yeah. And we started a conversation and him being as modest as he is, he I he was asking me questions and I knew he was a biologist and mm-hmm. I said, Well, you know, um, uh, I said, I can tell you're a biologist. What do you do after he's done asking me about what I do? Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, I do a little drawing here and there. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then he said, I'll give you my business card. Yeah. And as he was driving away, we passed and he handed me his business card uh-huh. through the window. And I, my jaw fell to the bottom of the car. Cause, was, yeah, uh, yeah, because he had introduced himself as Jack. And yeah, I yeah. instantly knew who he was. Yeah. And I hadn't ever watched his videos at that point. Uh-huh. So I didn't recognize him. Uh-huh. Um, but the reason that it appealed to me and I loved the book so much is um, I love drawing and I've always loved drawing. Uh-huh. And at different times in my life, I had given the time to drawing. And when I did, I would improve. Yeah. And I was always one of those people. It was one of my like secret longings was I wished that I could draw better. Yeah. And um, kind of a combination of when I met him in person and started really looking at his books more and watching his videos. And then connecting with some people here, I have a really good friend, Anon Duncan, who's a animator for the TV show Teen Titans Go. Cool. And we literally bumped into each other one day, and she yeah. said, I'm thinking of having a drawing group at my house. Oh, cool. So that started a regular habit um, uh-huh. until she um, moved a few months ago, uh-huh. uh, of where once a week a group would get together and we'd draw. And I just yeah. I started bringing my sketchbook out with me when I go out. Like My friends have a, a brewery, and when uh-huh. I go there on a Saturday night, I'll just yeah. pack my sketchbook cool. and my travel sketch kit, and I'll sit there and I'll draw. Um, and so, yeah, I always, I love the nature journaling, um, because it gives you kind of a, a way to engage in the world, a way yeah. to engage with nature. And, um, I just, the way that Jack teaches drawing insects was a way that spoke to me in a way that no other instruction that I had found uh-huh. until then. So it really, um, yeah. And it gives you, it, I always was a journaler. And so yeah, for me, okay. we were talking earlier about how that was a little bit of a hindrance yeah. at first because I thought, do I need a separate nature journal? Do I need to keep that like sterile right. and segregated away yeah. from my regular like doodlings and ramblings and scribblings and things yeah. that I keep in a journal? And the big breakthrough for me was realizing I didn't have to. I could have a journal that would be uh-huh. like my drawings and, and, you know, sometimes pages that aren't very carefully laid out that are just sketching. Right. And sometimes other things and that I was okay with mingling all that together. Yeah. So it sounds like you've sort of integrated, you really easily integrated the nature journaling with other things that you were already interested in or maybe your yeah. other interests yeah. kind of. Because the journaling was easy. It was the Got nature it. journaling. And, and for me, you know, it, it was... I think I was intimidated like a lot of people are in the beginning. Uh I remember I laughed because I got asked to teach at the Wild Wonder Conference. Yeah. And um, somebody on the Facebook group was saying something like, I'm I'm kind of intimidated by all these people and Uh and what this is going to be like. And I I chimed in, you know, I'm teaching a class there and I'm totally intimidated by how amazing all of this is, you know, Uh because so I kind of fell into it not being much of a nature journaler. Right. I'm more of a, I like to draw insects primarily what I draw. Got it. Um, Got it. And, uh, uh, but, but I'm doing more and more nature journaling and going out with people and meeting with groups like this. Yeah. And it's just opened up. It's fun to have other people who want to draw insects. Cause I have my bug friends. Yeah. But not all of them want to draw insects. Right. Um, right. And I have, you know, my artist friends, but not all of them want to draw. And so it's yeah. fun to have that intersection, other people who are 
interested in, in observing and drawing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's so cool. So, um, what would you recommend for other people who are um, maybe scientists or specialists in other fields um, that, uh, what would you recommend for people who, how like nature journaling has, has helped or like how you have incorporated, because it sounds like, you know, you were invited to the nature journaling conference even though you felt like you weren't like you hadn't really been nature journaling for yeah. so long, but you have this specialization in the field of entomology yeah. as a biologist. And so like, what would you recommend for other people who are um, other types of scientists or um, biologists or na uh, naturalists um, who maybe don't know about nature journaling yet yeah. or are just trying to get into it? I think what's so appealing about it is, and entomology has a long history of this, entomology is a science where a lot of really enormous breakthroughs were made with a notebook and a pencil mm. and patience and observation, uh -huh. right? You look at people like Charles Darwin, who was uh -huh. fundamentally an entomologist, he uh -huh. loved beetles. You yeah. look at everything that was figured out about honeybee behavior mm. and um, the hive. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Or things like E.O. Wilson figuring yeah. out pheromone trails, like right. a lot of that they weren't at you know at that stage they weren't sequencing dna they weren't right. they were literally sitting there like a lot of honeybee behavior was figured out by you mark a particular individual bee you sit there with a notebook yeah. you watch you ask questions right. where is that bee going what is that bee doing yeah and um and same thing like in my specialty um in school was taxonomy and systematics yeah. uh -huh. and a lot of that is simply i'm going to spend so much time looking at this particular specimens of this species yeah. that i start to notice these nuanced differences in the patterns in the number of hairs the number of spikes the arrangement of right. of features on their body and so i think for any scientist especially as we get into kind of the more frenetic fast-paced world mm -hmm. that ability to classically focus mm -hmm. and ask questions i think it just it broadens your ability to think scientifically mm -hmm. even somebody who would be a chemist right to mm -hmm. sit and actually try to think about those ideas and write them out and ask maybe what might seem like outrageous questions yeah and i think also when we get to be experts in one area mm -hmm. we kind of get closed off in that area and so it's it's nice to have this wonder that returns when mm. you're doing something like, I don't know very much about birds, right? Right. And so for me, if I watch birds, then all of a sudden there are all these questions that right. I don't have if I'm looking at insects, because I might know the answers yeah, to those already. That's... I mean, not that there's not an infinite number. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's really interesting. But I think in, in a lot of fields, um, but entomology in particular, a lot of what nature journalers do is pretty much what a lot of our early founders of our field did you know, Bob. So basically you're you saying know? that E.O. Wilson is a nature journaler, even if he doesn't know. Yeah, or Jean-Henri Fabb. Uh -huh. You know, these people are the big names, you know. Yeah, that they, you know, their notebooks may, and especially if we're, like, not, if we're actually being true to what we say and say that it doesn't have to be pretty art. Right. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. notebook, if you're tracking ants and figuring out what are mm -hmm. they following these pheromone trails and you're trying experiments with that, and, and yeah. a lot of it is pure observation and just hunkering down in nature and spending time looking cool. and watching. So, so cool. um, you live in an area that's the center of um, technology and mm -hmm. technological development, and you work with kids, and you have your own kids too, right? Yeah. So what would you say to, to parents um, these days who are trying to bring their kids up and prepare their kids for like these high-tech industries? Do you think, you know, what do you, do you think nature journaling does have a role to play? Um, for prepping kids for the future, or do you think it's sort of antiquated? No, I mean, I think the sort of focus, right? I think focus is a skill that um, that is really needed, and even needed in, like, the fields that are really techie, right? Right. Like, because, you know, it's one thing if you can relate to all of this technology and the fast pace of it, but to really be a focused thinker and mm -hmm. observer is really what a lot of the companies want yeah. in the end right mm -hmm. um i also think that p kids are just hungry for it mm -hmm. and so if it feeds a part of them that's that they're hungry for then it's doing them a benefit right mm -hmm. like uh, for instance the one high school class that i regularly teach is a design tech high school it's the mm -hmm. design thinking high school that is on the campus of oracle mm -hmm. so it's a school that was founded with this whole experiment of like a very tech-based mm -hmm. a very design thinking and 
I get these kids that are steeped in that and they love it when we go out collecting bugs. Cool. Like they all get Did out the nets. Did you see some of these were from your high school? Yeah, or? yeah, these are. Could you show are, one yeah, of those? Yeah, so these are, I'll have them, you know, this is very old school and then this is one of the fields of biology where we collect our animals, but like this is one of the ones that, you know, they, these are high school kids. They get, I get them only for two weeks. Uh -huh. They collected 120 insects in nine different orders. Um, out by, and this is just along the Bay Trail. Yeah. You know, this is not a, a super dense, diverse to, habitat. So, just, so, you know, this is the display the kids turned in as their final project together. Wow. So, I would have loved that in high school. Right? Yeah. And they love it. I mean, it's, a, it's funny because it's one of the more academic classes they offer during this intercession. Uh -huh. But it fills up. It's super popular uh -huh. because... Um, I think the kids are hungry for right. it and there's no I have no trouble getting like I don't have to you know say put away your phones and get out right. your nets like they want to go out and wander and catch bugs and right. so I mean I think if they're hungry for it then they need it some you know some part of that you know mm -hmm. we don't have to necessarily make that connection of oh then it mm -hmm. translates to this to mm -hmm. this to this mm -hmm. um, you know just being out and being in nature I think we too often say, oh, kids aren't into that these days right. or whatever, but they, they yeah. really are. I mean, yeah. So what is, um, for parents of like teenagers, for example, yeah. since you work with teenagers and I think that's the age yeah. group that a lot of people are worried or, or maybe, you know, like if the parents are just getting into nature journaling, they might think, oh, my teenager is just going to poo poo all over this yeah. or, or be, or give me that like, look, you know, yeah. oh, mom, don't show me your nature journal. Like yeah. what would, what's a piece of advice you'd give for parents of teenagers? You know, there is just so much cool diversity out there. Uh -huh. There's something, there's a story for everybody and there's something for everyone. I think, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, for me with my bugs, when I always say when the live bugs come out at the library or a mm -hmm. school, if I'm teaching, especially for the library and I have a large age range, it doesn't matter if you're two or 95, like you're into right, it because right. it's cool. Tarantulas are cool, yeah. you know? And, um, so there's always some, you know, you can find out, I mean, there's just going to be people that are into things and people that aren't into certain right, things. Right? right. But I think to discount, um, you know, that, that these that a kid's just not going to be into nature. They're just right. so, I mean, and everything that they are into is often stolen directly from nature. Right, you know? right. Like your Pokemon Like my bug's a Pokemon yeah. class. Mm -hmm. Or if, you're, if your kid's into like sci-fi or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, manga or something, mm -hmm. you know, there's always stuff. There's always yeah. stuff, right? That relates back to, because uh, mm -hmm. that's where they get their ideas. Right, that's where exactly. the Star Wars creatures come from. They mm -hmm. come from nature. They yeah. come from real cool bugs and mm -hmm. things like that yeah. so you know and i think and a lot of kids are into art mm -hmm. and a lot of kids are hungry for art mm -hmm. right like my, somebody was asking my 10 year old son what's his favorite thing at school he said when we get to have art time which isn't every day it isn't even every week at their mm -hmm. school at this point yeah and so i think um you know i often if I often see groups of teenagers sitting around sketching, mm -hmm. you know, they might be doing little anime kind of drawings right. or, yeah. you know, so I think that kids really like that. They, you know, so I don't think it's too hard of a stretch for some kids. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. Stephanie. Yeah, I that hope that's awesome. helpful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you Yay. for bringing this group together. And I'm cool. just a delight to have people come and yeah. sketch bugs with me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had a really good time. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I could, it's been forever here drawing bugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if anybody in the Bay Area wants to join us or is yeah. going to be in the Bay Area, we'll be doing it every month. And cool. um, they can contact me through BeTheLady.com because I don't have to know you directly if you want to come draw bugs. I'd love it if artists Great. call me up and say, hey. All right. Let's see. It's a cricket. if you're too forward about it they're like what? if you got a value out of this video consider subscribing here and if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show check out these two videos that i picked for you here